Good morning and welcome to our online webinar, There Be Dragons, Trans Transitioning, Transitioning Through the Unknown. And this is part one, Leading Through Uncharted Waters. My name is Sarah Haffenden and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at UKZN Extended Learning, also known as UEL. In case you are unfamiliar with UEL, we are the Continuing Education Unit of the University of KwaZulu-Natal and we offer all the short courses on behalf of the university. So we are offering these webinars as we are in full support and compliance with the directive of the national lockdown, which was issued to address the COVID-19 pandemic. We have embraced the changes and have launched a number of projects aimed at providing free access to learning materials during this lockdown period. So one of these projects is our online learning webinars. And this web webinar forms part of a four part series entitled There Be Dragons Transitioning Through the Unknown. So this is part one, leading through uncharted waters. Our webinars will continue throughout June on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then from July will be offered once a week on Tuesdays. So please take a look at our final slide at the end of this webinar for further details on upcoming webinars, or you can visit our website, www.ukznextendedlearning.com. So please note that the, due to the nature of this webinar, we will not be able to address raised hands and questions throughout the presentation, Please post all your comments and questions in the Q&A area, and these will be addressed at the end of the webinar. We will also allow for live questions at the end, so you just raise your hand if you have a question and that you would like to, to ask live. So I'd now like to introduce you to our guest speaker for today. It's Zinchle Mpungoza. Zinchle Mpungoza. <laughs> Zinchle is a seasoned organizational development specialist, a digital transformation and cultural strategist. She has spent the past decade understanding organizational behavior and facilitating solutions that transform their way of being, policies and processes that when implemented, profoundly improve organizational effectiveness and competitive advantage. Her professional experience and exposure is a mix of digital change management, cultural and leadership development, and her expertise and experience animate from working in major consulting firms and across industries such as the public sector, retail, mining, and financial services. Zinchle is a doctoral candidate researching the future of work. She is deeply passionate about her role of supporting organizations design human-centric innovations by leveraging organizational culture, employee engagement, and effective change management. She specializes in the identification and transformation of belief systems that restrain business and personal progress and is a recipient of the 2018 Inspiring 50 Award for Women in STEM. She is currently the Transnet Executive Manager for Group Talent and Transformation. So welcome Zintle and over to you. Sorry Zintle, you just need to unmute. Okay, I've unmuted. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Hello? All right. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I must say this uh, thing of uh, webinars is... Oh, am I unmuted? Uh, give me feedback. Okay. Um, yes. All yes. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. All good. Okay, fantastic. All right. Good morning, everyone. I trust you're all well, safe. And, uh, and by safe, I mean mentally, physically, and emotionally, because as we are all are, don't know which parts of uh, South Africa or the world you might be dialing in, but for once the universe is in the same space where we are threatened or faced with an unknown territory, an unknown experience, and uh, we need to lead ourselves through this uncharted uh, waters. And the reason that I really chose um, the theme, There Be Dragons, is uh, because of. Um, it, uh, where we're finding ourselves is a place where previously, before uh, the, the real maps that we now have were designed and confirmed, was that this phrase was used as a warning. And uh, it was used by map makers when the world was considered to be a flat surface and that if you uh, journey too far, you might fall off the face of the earth. As the saying goes, you fall off the face of the earth. And it really was about the far away uncharted corners of the map. And uh, when the map makers used to draw those maps, they would then put dragons as a signal to say that they were 
dangerous areas such as sea monsters and whatever else. And because obviously at the time people believed that there were such monsters and that you would fall off the face of the earth if you journeyed too far. And uh, if now we all know that there aren't really monsters, but it still serves as a saying that um, it is dangerous where you are treading. And these are the sayings that we're treading where angels fear to tread. So it's basically a theme around um, how to transition through that unknown and uncertain space. And for me, the theme is around the, world, the time of explorers, the world explorers. And uh, one such person, oh, sorry, I'm moving my slide. And it is frozen. Let's see, fantastic. All right, so uh, as I mentioned that, it, that, that the, the Happy Dragons was the phase that was used back then. And the theme of the series will be around various aspects of chattering uncharted waters. And when I speak of leaders, it's not only just leaders of others, but it's leader of self as a start, because you need to lead yourself and from an ownership perspective that you, you would need to lead yourself from an unknown space and transition to the other side where you will only learn the journey as you go through the sea monsters, the various other scary things that you will uh, find in between. And um, so this theme of um, there be dragons really is about identifying what kind of characteristics would one need to basically face their fears and do something anyway. And our current and real fear is COVID-19 or the coronavirus, where there is a lot of uncertainty about it. Uh, luckily, there are countries uh, that we can also now learn from, such as New Zealand, who have, in the face of it, seemingly conquered and got to the other side. So at least we have a reference point to even start with. So um, as a start, I'd like to introduce you to one such pathfinder, uh, his name is um, Sir Shackleton, so just two minutes of your time.
Right. Um, so the reason that I've introduced this video clip and also even my settings, <laughs> I opted to facilitate the session outside because working from home is the new norm and, um, and being out in the environment, anything's possible, including a dog coming into your meeting and, uh, or the neighbor vacuuming their leaves. So there's so much that is uncertain and unpredictable and it's about navigating that. And as I mentioned that being a leader and that is leading yourself, it could be leading teams, it could be leading your family. Um, it's about basically knowing how to find a path in uncharted waters in this kind of period that we are in. And uh, the reason that I opted for this particular gentleman was because there's lessons in, um, in this short video clip that you'll see. It's about perseverance in an almost certain uh, phase of de defeat. And it's about someone who had a plan. All right, had a goal or a strategic intent. And in knowing that strategic intent, that he would need a team to get to his end goal. And also in identifying just what kind of people he would need. Because the first thing you notice in the clip is that he did an advert. And in his planning, because you may be wondering, okay, all the photographs that are there, in his detailed planning, he even hired a video um a video maker or a photographer to ensure that he records every moment of their journey so that also gave a good account of history but in terms of just what we are looking for the leadership lessons from the shackleton expedition the first first part of it is you know here you have somebody with a goal and a vision and um they needed to embark on something that they thought they knew where they were going we all started the year with goals, with intents, whether it's businesses as or as individuals. And whilst we were minding our business, carrying on with our lives, suddenly an uncertain state came into our lives, whereby we found ourselves almost in a shipwreck because that's exactly what happened with uh, Shackleton. They embarked on a journey where he was set to become a hero. All he wanted to be was to become famous. That was his end goal. And because that was the era of his time where it was about exploration and he just wanted to be famous and recruited a team of people that understood that they were going to have hazardous conditions. They would be paid uh, very little. They will only reward if they survived. That was the advert as well, was that they would get some form of recognition uh, in case of success. So what I also liked about that in terms of his communication, he was very clear in communicating where the direction was going, what kind of conditions people would be finding themselves in, and as well as what kind of reward would be available should you want to join that. And whilst they were journeying, they obviously came across the elements and they were shipwrecked. And now this is where the lessons start happening in that when they were shipwrecked, he was decisive. He had to make a change in his strategic direction instead. So now some of the challenges that we have as leaders is that you set a goal that you are going north and in going north, uncertain things happen or unplanned activities come into your work and, and, and block you. And instead of reflecting and revising your strategy some of us continue to hold on to that instead of that so what we found was a gentleman here who had to make a decision and in making that decision he was swift to put action and also sit, set a direction for his team that and i also like the, the language because it also showed humor in him that she's going boys so not holding on to the attachment of the ship which was by the way nicely named um what was the name of the ship let me see uh kind of kind of slipped my mind. Endurance. Yes. So that was very interesting as well. In that the ship was even called endurance itself because almost when you are contracting to walk the journey, it's almost like be reminded constantly that endurance is needed right here. So the second part of it was his level of consciousness. You know, besides communicating clearly and naming the ship endurance, he was very aware that um he was very aware of his environment. He was aware of his team and the team morale. And part of leading 
is a need to be conscious, conscious of your state of mind, because part of being in this COVID-19 state is that some of us may find ourselves at some point needing to be isolated, or some of our relatives or some of our loved ones may need to go through a process of having to be quarantined or to, um, to be isolated, to go through to the other end of getting healthy. Now, when you are leading yourself in that space, it is very important that you are quite aware of what is your state of mind? What resources do you have? How can you get through? And with regards to a team, if you are leading a team or you are leading people, you need to be conscious of that their morale might be impacted by this uncertainty. And especially when you are facing what appears to be certain death or certain defeat or a lot of unanswered, unclear questions. So one of the things, and obviously as characters that one needs is the level of consciousness. The second part of it, what we learn is that in ensuring and keeping up the morale of his people or his team was being mindful of that. There are certain rituals that you need to get into. And if you notice, whilst we're on lockdown, in other countries, other people were doing a lot of exercising, keeping well, continuing to have a program. And then there's the element of homeschooling. So it means parents who are having to homeschool their kids have to design a new program for their kids as well. Because not only are you in lockdown as an individual, but you're in lockdown probably as a family. And uh, now there's going back to school. How then do you create rituals to keep the whole household engaged, also looking forward to the next day, and encouraged that we will all get through this at the same time. So it's about then identifying what kind of rituals would you need to practice on a daily basis? So basically adopting daily deliberate actions that will see you through this difficult unknown period. And there's nothing certain, obviously. But luckily, we now have access to the internet. We have access to information, which means you can be able to choose to find what information can be out there that can support you and your family and your teams to get through the difficult time. Now, imagine during Shackleton's time, there was nothing or nothing to for them to learn from in terms of knowledge sharing, but from an inherent understanding uh, of himself and the team that he's leading. The third part is emotional resilience, that in spite of the environment, the shipwreck, and the fact that the whole world was caught up in its own other challenges, it was during a war. The whole world right now is caught up in surviving and getting through COVID-19, individually, collectively. So in some form or shape, each one of us has to play their own role in getting through this. So the next thing that one needs to obviously strengthen is emotional resilience. How do you become positive? How do you become strong through such a difficult time? And also being able to listen Emotional resilience also is, a, is an aspect of emotional intelligence where you become aware that you need others in order for you to get through. In South Africa, you have Ubuntu that I am because of others. So understanding that for you to get through this difficult time, you need to be able to be a part of a community that is going towards one goal. So it means being able to listen to advice listen to health workers, listen to the scientists in some parts of what they're sharing with us, listen to what has gone well for others we have gone through, and also the patience to wait this through. Lockdown requires the patience to get through it. It requires emotional resilience to get through isolation. And it also requires for you to understand that you are not alone, there are others who are going through the same and finding an ability to connect with everybody else that can get you through that. Right. And then the fourth thing that we can learn from this expedition was about courage. In an era where the world was considered flat, as I've mentioned, and there be dragons under uncertainty and apparent fa failure, these gentlemen proved that courage is what will get you through being able to face your fears. So if the fear is COVID-19, how do you face it and get through that? 
So in spite of the harsh conditions, navigating an unknown and uncharted territory requires courage. Courage to make a decision. Courage to, uh, to be disciplined about your new habits because our new norm is basically going to be with us for some time. And it means having the courage to adapt to new norms and being able to successfully work through those, all right? And uh, the last thing from this is about a hunger. A hunger to get through, a hunger to succeed. And in a simple word, determination. Now, I'm certain a whole lot of you might have tried a diet at some point or another, or to change your eating plan, and uh, halfway along it gave up, simply because you didn't have enough drive inside of you to get through it. So part of being able to successfully transition to the other side of an unknown, uncharted, and seemingly um, apparent defeat is having that hunger and that determination to get through it that determination that no matter what comes in your way, you will get through because difficulties are just things to overcome after all. And that is what um, we can learn from here. Now, in terms of the final lesson on transitioning through the difficult period, as I mentioned, this is a, a, a foundation towards the various series that we're going to cover. And uh, so I thought, let me start with a couple of key things that one needs to know in terms of character. What kind of character does a leader need in order to be able to face their fears and get through what is unknown and what is difficult? So we all are aware that New Zealand has become the first country that survived and conquered the unknown enemy, which is COVID-19. And when we look at it, it's almost like they are like a tree that had a positive mindset. And I've used a tree deliberately as well because a tree is only as strong as its roots. And we know that character is inherent and it's informed by also the habits, what we apply our minds to, what we pay attention to, what we entertain. And therefore with the tree, the roots, how it's fed, the soil that it is in. and um, and then in, those, in, in that tree, if I were to take the leaves, the first part of it is about attitude. What kind of attitude do you have towards uncertainty? How do you choose to see things, perception? Because one person's view from another person's view gives them completely different results. I won't compare any leaders at the moment in terms of perceptions and how they've handled their different um, scenarios, because we've all basically been given the same exam paper in terms of the global pandemic. All leaders have been given exactly the same script and it has, and how the script has played out has been around attitudes, it has been around perceptions, and also we notice the power of words and how we communicate and emotional intelligence and awareness. So in looking at New Zealand, just from what the media reports that we've noticed is that its success is largely attributed, relatively attributed to the leader's swift and decisiveness on acting on um, what was obviously a, 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 sorry, I just want to move this a little bit. There we go. Uh, you know, in terms of her decision to take the most almost unpopular decision to shut down her borders, and to say, you know what, we are faced with an unknown certain enemy and I need to make a decision and be decisive and be swift about that. And the second part is that it took courage and uh, leadership to heed scientific advice and go for the elimination of the virus. So with her, the decision was about we are eliminating this thing and we are going to take as much advice that we can and uh, and, 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 and the decision was not necessarily a popular one, obviously, because not many countries could afford what they did. And especially one such as theirs, that is a small island uh, that is reliant heavily on tourism. The third that we noticed was in terms of her words, in terms of her communication, very firm, very consistent messaging throughout. And the belief behind her that even 
the opposition parties rallied behind her, believed her because of her position in terms of her communication, in terms of her courage, in terms of her decisiveness, and in terms of her consistency. And the other part was compassion, in that much as she was firm, the words that we see there is about be strong and be kind. Protect the bubble. So the picture painted here is that we need to protect ourselves. We need to create this bubble. And it is a collective responsibility. And we all need to be kind to one another. We all need to be strong whilst at it. And, and when the survey was done, it showed that there was 80% trust in the government to make the right decisions around the response. And obviously, that kind of uh, commitment from uh, people whom you are leading, whether at home or in a country, I mean a country that's even bigger, it means they, they must have gained some trust. And that trust comes from what they've observed in the behavior. And we can see the same thing with um, Shackleton. He was able to deliver all of the people that he recruited on that dangerous um, and very scary exploration. And simply because he cared, he was courageous, he was decisive, and he was very conscious. And we find that it's one of the new things that leaders need to develop empathy and compassion. And you'll see in the next series, we start talking about how to lead with compassion. And I start to unpack some of these characteristics and some of these aspects from a human behavior perspective on handling an uncertain space, on dealing with unknown and confronting fears. And the last part in the same way is the awareness, you know, her consciousness that, so you've delivered. However, she's not blind to the fact that she's still a politician, it is still a country, and that New Zealand is about to enter a very tough winter. But every winter is followed by spring, and if we make the right choices, we can get the New Zealanders back to work and our economy moving back quickly. And again, also with what I've used as a tree, is that life is full of seasons, and all seasons pass. And when you are aware that the difficult period that you're going through is going to pass. You need to get through this particular period. If you're in a winter, how's the best to get through a winter period of life? What can keep you warm? What can keep you safe? And when all the leaves fall off your tree, you know that it's not the end of the tree's life, but it just needs nourishing. It needs more watering. It needs more manure. It needs more building up in terms of encouraging the life source within the tree. And spring will come again and those leaves will spring out and you will get through to the other side. So that's basically the introduction of the Epi Dragons that we are facing an uncertain and almost unknown, but it's a great thing that we now know that it is uh, achievable to be free of the virus and that as leaders, we can be able to learn from those who have successfully charted the unknown and go through to the other side and defeated the dragons. So in closing is that choices are inevitable. There's no way to avoid them. You're always confronted with a choice to turn left or to turn right. And the best thing is to take a deep breath and choose the line you want to make and draw. In getting through COVID-19, what line and what choices do you need to take and how would you like to draw the end or the journey towards to the other side? Thank you. That brings me to a close. And uh, in terms of designing a similar type of a program in more detail for your organization um, or your department, you would need to contact UKZN through the details available. And um, also what you would I'd like to know that obviously this was an introduction to a whole lot more of a series. This is a build up. So in the next uh, series or in the next module, we will be unpacking the new requirement for leaders, which is empathy on how to lead with empathy during an unknown and difficult time. And in terms of just the dragon slaying, what kind of culture do you need to build within your organization, within your household? And culture being the way of doing things. So basically, what do you need to do differently 
in order for your family to get through this difficult time. And uh, the reason I've used dragon slaying is metaphorically, COVID-19 is an enemy or a disease that one needs to fight emotionally, psychologically, and physiologically. You need to confront it with a full awareness that it is it, it exists and uh, it is out there to get you, if you can put it that way, scary. And therefore, you need to know how to conquer and how to slay this dragon and how to get through to the other side. And in terms of just moving on forward, how do you make the changes that your organization has gone through a whole lot of lengths to establish as the new norm? How do you sustain that? How do you sustain the momentum? How do you build uh, your employee experience and how do you keep your employees more uh, uh, engaged and their morale up? And even with your kids, how do you keep them still motivated, inspired and encouraged? Because they also get through depression. They get discouraged by this unknown and uncertain space. And some are even more afraid to go back to school as we are going back to school. So um, this is a journey that we are taking. And I hope that you have enjoyed today's session and uh, the following modules are going to be slightly more uh, in depth in what I've mentioned and longer in, uh, in the discussions and in the theory behind that. All right, so I'll bring that to a close and ask for questions. I see that there are some hands that are read. Um, so there are some chats. Uh, let me see if I'm able to read. Or Sarah, are you able to assist me with the, um, with the questions? Or the chat. Sure. Um, there was some questions coming through, and they were basically asking about uh, the presentation, the video being available. So, so the presentation and the video will be available uh, probably this afternoon. If anyone has have any other questions, they are welcome to post them in the Q and A box, or you're able to raise your hand and ask your questions live. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to launch a poll where you are able to rate the session today. So if you, if you do see that, please would you just uh, fill it in, it's just one click. And if anyone has any questions, I'll give you a minute to, to type them in or raise your hand. Sarah, do we proceed? Yeah, I haven't got anything at the moment. Um, but if anyone does have any questions that they think of, just comments, basically. Wonderful, thank you. Inspiring stuff, thank you. Um, so I think everyone is looking forward to your, your next webinars where we go into greater detail. But if anyone does have any questions that do come up and that you didn't think of at this present moment, when we do send out the email this afternoon with the link to the actual uh, video and the PowerPoint, there is a space there where you can provide feedback and you're welcome to post your question there and we will get uh, Zintle to be in touch with you with the, with the answers. So. Well, thank you, Zinchle, for sharing with us today. And yeah, it was inspiring stuff. I think we all feel motivated to take on COVID-19. Uh, we are looking forward to all your upcoming webinars in this series. So thank you for giving us the start today. So thank you as well for our attendees for joining us and engaging in the webinars. Uh, the video and the slides, as I said, will be available on the UEL website. And we will send this link out directly to you once it is ready. Um, I just do have a question that's come through, Zinshe. Can I just read that for you? It's from mm -hmm. Rosella. She said, New Zealand model is excellent, but has a different culture, cultural and socioeconomic texture. How can we integrate this into the SA context? Right, and I think that's why in part of the journey, uh, if you look, I, I first cover empathy which is a leadership characteristic. And there, there will be some comparisons that I will do when I'm doing that, um, the, the, that particular series or that module in terms of what kind of uh, leadership and even as a collective, you know, as a, because yes, to compare South Africa 
and other countries because what I've done also is I've had conversations with different people. I mean, I'm also having conversations with some people from um, Eastern Europe about their, how they're coping with the, the uh, coronavirus and how, they, well, how they're managing that. And then the second part, then eventually we get to the, the culture aspect because if you noted with the New Zealanders, they all rallied behind their uh, leader and they all took ownership. And also in terms of, yes, economically, they are going to go through a winter, that's for certain, because a country that is largely dependent on tourism and sport and what they are known for, and being an island, uh, it certainly doesn't favor them, but uh, it, that would be another lesson that we're gonna learn from that. So when we cover the part that looks at culture and how our way of being and our behaviors can support us in learning some lessons from those from New Zealand and doing a comparative analysis of the two, where are our possible wins and why do we need to improve and do things differently? Okay, thanks. And then just, uh, oh, shame. Rosella says, sorry, I was disconnected for a moment. Um, oh. mm -hmm. So <laughs> if we just do a quick recap of what you said. Uh, otherwise, if you want, you can maybe watch the recording. What's easier for you essentially? Oh, no. And normally when a person asks something, they would like to know right then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry, sure. whilst you were disconnected, I mentioned that um, in terms of how the series has been done is that we go closer and closer to answering the question. So starting from um, the empathy aspect, all right, and then moving eventually to about culture. And what I've been doing as part of the preparation is comparing the different cultures of the different countries, because that does play a role in, her, in terms of uh, how um they survived this difficult time and uh, also in terms of south africa's particular economic settings uh where um, we have and I, I don't want to go into too much of that detail but we have the alexanders we have the kailiches we have areas where there are dense this dense population of people and part of getting through or one of the key things of getting through this is the new norm, which is social distancing. And how do you social distance in a shack that doesn't have a kitchen, doesn't have a lounge, and doesn't have a toilet? So, um, so we'll have a look at some of those dynamics that make South Africa different from New Zealand and from other European countries. And where can we have wins and where do we have potential uh, challenges and what can be done from that? So yes, I am cognizant of the difference between our culture but in terms of the economy, I also mentioned that the decisiveness of New Zealand was knowing that their country depends on tourism largely. And the first thing that they did was to close the borders. All right. Um, so financially, they have taken a serious knock. Uh, some have said that the only the, the government support they got, what many just barely put food on the table. So the, then that's why um, the leaders are aware that they're going into a winter because they are about to start experiencing a difficult and a different kind of challenge, but at least everybody has their health and they're good and well. So it's about then the different priorities, what we put first, the chicken or the egg. So when we get to the culture piece, we'll have a look at what are the comparisons and what, what can we learn from the different countries. Okay, and then uh, just a few more comments. Lance says, wonderful approach to uncertainty, thank you. Uh, and Lovo Al says, thank you. Would like to learn more on leadership in this era. Uh, quite, ins quite inspiring. Uh, and then Rosella just comments, it is about attitude. Thank you, essentially. Okay, so if you excited to learn more about what uh, Zinchley has put together, she will be here for the next three weeks. So just if you have a look at our upcoming webinars, Next week, there is a public holiday on Tuesday, so there's no webinar, but since she will be back with us on Thursday, the 18th of June, and that she'll be doing part two, choosing empathy over power as a way of leading. And then the following week, Tuesday, we will have a new guest speaker on, uh, a marketing specialist talking about leading for results, three breakthrough strategies for the Corona-19 era. And then obviously Zinjda will be back with us on that Thursday. So please RSVP to secure your place. 
So we also have a few online courses we are offering for free during the lockdown period. So we're sharing our own as well as partnering with other organizations in order to provide free access. So please do visit our websites at www.ukznextendedlearning.com to see what we have on offer. Otherwise, uh, we hope that you enjoyed this session. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.